Hey yo, what's good everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, aka Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick. I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. You know what it is, it's Ray Bucks, it's the parlay god. Yes indeed, we're here to cover this weekend's pay-per-view card. We got Alex Poetan Pereira going up against Khalil, we <laughs> Khalil Roundtree. Uh, we're going to have the light heavyweight title on the line. Uh, we also got the women's bantamweight <coughs> title. What in the fuck was that? <laughs> uh, we're also going to have the women's bantamweight title on the line. We got Raquel Pennington going up against Juliana Pena. Uh, this is slated to be a 12-fight card as of now. We'll see how we're recording this a little early, so we'll see how things pan out. But uh, we're going to start things off in the lightweight division. We got Alex Hernandez going up against Austin Hubbard. Hernandez is coming in 6-7 and seven in the UFC, 14-8 and eight overall, and 1-4 and four in their last five fights. We got Hubbard coming in. They are 4-5 and five in the UFC, 16-7 and seven overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five fights. Uh, I'm going to be going with Hubbard in this one by either decision or submission. Uh, they're a durable fighter, I would say, with a, you know, a decent amount of experience in the UFC. They've kind of had an on and, you know, on and off, again, uh, career with uh, the UFC. So uh, they've made their way back in, I think, for, I want to say, either a second or a third stint. Um, they got a decent, you know, gas tank. Uh, they're going to have the edge and grappling, I think, in this one. And uh, they, they get tired, but I noticed that they're able to push through sometimes. Um, he'll just need to outlast Hernandez, basically, to win this fight. Hernandez, they're a powerful striker, uh, but over time, I've just noticed that they have a bad gas tank. Their durability is not all that great. And really, that they, they would have to get basically like a first round or early second round KO for this to uh, go in their favor. So. Uh, I'll be going with Hubbard in this one. I'll be going with Hernandez. And that's the correct pick. Uh, I just, I think he's uh, he's had some tough losses in his last couple. Uh, one being against Bill Algio, the other one being against David Jackson. Um, and I just don't think that Austin Hubbard has uh, fought the same caliber of uh, UFC fighters um, that uh, Hernandez has. And uh, for that reason, I've got to go with Hernandez. I just think that he's going to be able to get it done. Uh, against Hubbard. I think this is going to be a great fight. I don't think it's a, a clear winner one way or another, um, but my money's on Hernandez. Fun fact, uh, I ran into uh, Alex Hernandez um, while the Denver card was going on. Okay. He was uh, in the Pepsi Center, super low-key, chilling, actually just scrolling his phone. Said what up to him real quick. But uh, yeah, just, just, just looked like a regular dude for the most part, but definitely, you know, in the street, you wouldn't that wouldn't want to be boring. Uh, moving on, we got a welterweight bout between Tim Means going up against Court McGee. We got Means coming in there 15 and 13 with one no contest in the UFC, 33 16 with one draw and one no contest overall, and one and four in their last five fights. Oh, um, we got McGee coming in there 10 and 12 in the UFC. 21 and 13 overall and 2 and 3 in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Means in this one by decision or KO. Uh I just feel like they're going to be the um more experienced of the two super vets actually, you know, in this fight. Uh they're going to be the older, taller fighter. Um they're a striker who can grapple, uh probably can mix it up in both of in both of those departments a little more than McGee does. Uh, but I feel like he's probably just going to want to keep this one standing for the most part. Um, McGee, he's going to be the smaller fighter. Like I said, super vet, striker that can grapple, but more of just like a old school, you know, grind, you know, try to get that decision or some ground and pound, you know, just kind of break you style. Um, but I'm going to go with means in this one. Like I said, I feel like he's, he'll be able to mix it up a little bit better. He should get this one done by, like, decision or KO. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to be going with Means. I'm going to go with Means as well. Uh, 
his record doesn't give me a lot of uh, a lot of confidence in this particular pick, uh, considering he is one and four in his last five. Um, but Court McGee's not doing much better. He's on a three fight skid. Yeah. Um, so I think Tim Means, uh, unfortunately, uh, has just ran into uh, some killers in his last few bouts. Um, so I, I think that's kind of the that's the reason his record looks so rough. Um, and uh, I, I just don't think that uh, Court McGee has has ran into the same level of competition. And and, and uh, you know what I mean. I, I think he just has a bad record. It just is what it is. Um, I think his uh, three fight slide is going to turn into a four fight slide. Um, I think this is going to be a good fight, uh, an entertaining fight, um, like most of this card will be. Um, I just think uh, it means he's going to get down. For sure, for sure. All right, moving on to the light heavyweight division. We got Ovin St. Pru going up against Ryan Spann. We got St. Pru coming in. They are 15 and 12 in the UFC, 27 and 17 overall. And two and three in their last five fights. We got Span coming in. They are seven and five in the UFC, 21 and 10 overall, and two and three in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Span by either sub or decision in this one. Um, They're going to be the taller fighter. I think they'll have the edge in the grappling. Um, Three fights skid, though. Um, They got good hands, decent gas tank. More routes to victory, in my opinion. I feel like if they keep this on the feet, that's probably better for them. Um, but they could also take it to the ground and uh, maybe zap Prue's uh, energy early on. Uh, but they they got to be able to measure their uh, energy as well. I'd say St. Prue, uh, although they coined their own cho- choke, Come on, that was you know just a version of a different choke. Um, I just feel like at this stage in their career, I don't know if they're going to be able to keep up with Span. Uh, but they are a vet who can uh, get the best of you if you let them stick around. So I'm going to be going with Span in this one, though, because I feel like he has to get a win. Yeah, he has to. It's not going to be today. We got to go with OSP on this one. Uh, I think he gets it done against Span. I think he just has a, a, a deeper arsenal of weapons. Um, to use against Span, uh, I think Span is a little bit better of a wrestler than OSP is, but not by much. Um, I it's hard to bet on Span when he's on a three fight skid. Yeah. Um, I know they're both two and three, but all Spans have been three in a row back to back to back. Um, and just most recently he's been KO'd. Um, so that always is a a, a concern. Um, you know what I mean? That 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 chin's not gonna hold up. Uh, he's coming back only after, I believe, four months um, since being KO'd, which makes me worry a little bit uh, that that it isn't going to hold up. So I got to go with OSP on this one. But I still think this is another great fight, another tough one. Um, I think that can go either way. For sure, for sure. All right, moving on to the welterweight division. We got Steven Thompson going up against Joaquin Buckley. Uh, we got Wonder Boy Thompson coming in twelve and seven with one draw in the UFC, seventeen and seven with that one draw overall, and two and three in their last five fights. We got Buckley coming in there nine and four in the UFC, nineteen and six overall, and four and one in their last five fights. Um, I'm gonna be going with Buckley in this one by either KO or decision. They're gonna be the younger, smaller fighter, but. Definitely a dangerous striker, KO power, and uh, they got some grappling that I think if they mix it up in this fight, that'll be their route to victory. Um, they just need to manage their energy. I would say that's probably the only concern I have. Uh, Thompson, he's going to be the older fighter by 11 years. Taller, you know, longer. Um, dangerous striker. Um, but I just feel like the game's starting to catch up with him. He, he could finish you or disable you with his style. If it's just kind of like a, you know, just something that you, you can't, you know, compute, but I just feel like cats are starting to evolve at this stage in the game. He doesn't really have any good grappling. So, uh, he needs to keep it on the feet. But if, like I said, if Buckley's smart, he'll mix in some wrestling, get the W in this one. Yeah, I kind of go with back-to-back 40-year-olds. Uh, so I'm definitely going with Joaquin Buckley as well. 
uh, you and me are taking a chance on OSP, but uh, I'm not going to do it on us, uh, Wonder Boy, unfortunately. Wonder Boy is a great, uh, one, one of the one of the best that's ever done it. Um, but my guy, you're 41. You're going up against a 30 year old. Like it's time to set the gloves down. I think you know what I mean. Uh, I mean, he doesn't do bad in his fights. I mean, I see why he's still fighting, but uh, he's got to be getting pretty close to uh, to laying him down in the ring. Uh, I get. I think Joaquin Buckley gets this one done uh, on the ground, uh, probably in a ground and pound. For sure. For sure. Uh, moving on to the women's strawweight division, we got Carla Esparza going up against Tisha Pennington. Um, we got Esparza coming in; they're ten and five in the UFC, nineteen and seven overall, and four and one in their last five fights. We got Pennington coming in; they're nine and seven in the UFC, thirteen and seven overall, and three and two in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Esparza in this fight. This is. Uh, probably by either a sub or a decision. Um, this fight is not gonna be entertaining. Boring. Um, let me let me switch. That up. <laughs> I'm gonna say decision or sub because most likely this <coughs> is gonna be a sub. You know, a fight that goes the distance might not be uh that entertaining. I mean, I watched Carla Esparza fight for the title against Rose Nami Yunus live. And that's probably one of the most boring title fights I've ever watched. And she won that fight only because she had Rose so spooked about her wrestling that Rose really didn't enact any offense. So it was probably the wildest way I've ever seen somebody win the title for a second time. Fun fact, she was the first uh, ever person to win the title in this division. Uh, but yeah, in this fight, I just think that she'll just have the better wrestling. I think even though they're both pretty inactive fighters. Uh, I just feel like she has probably had a little bit more time to focus on fighting in, in comparison to Pennington, who's, uh, you know, doubling between mommy duties and, you know, supporting her wife, who's the champion of the bantamweight division, you know. So I just feel like Pennington's kind of just doing this to, you know, stay active and not just be a mom. Whereas as far as I feel like still has just some aspirations to to prove herself within the division, maybe not title aspirations, but I feel like she'll be able to get it done in this fight, being more so a uh, hungrier of the two. I've well, Carla is also a new mom. Um, that's why she's uh, taking some time off. She hasn't fought since two thousand twenty-two. Um, so she's a new mom too. She's a new mom as well. Hmm. Uh, so. That's why she has she's taking that time off. Um, this is a tough pick for me because I do not like picking a, a fighter who hasn't fought in two years. Um, but at the end of the day, she has been a champion. Um, I, I think uh, I think she's the better of the two fighters. Hopefully, there's not a lot of ring rust. If there's not a lot of ring rust, I think we're, I think she gets it done against Pennington. Um, this is gonna be a boring fight. This is a fight where I will grab another beer. Hey, give me another uh, beer, bitch. And I'll just wait till the uh, the next fight with uh, Portier and Almeida. But Carlos, Carla Esparza gets this one done uh, by decision for sure. Um, this will be a very boring fight. Yeah, my, my research for this episode has been fucking booty. Uh, <laughs> moving on <laughs> to the middleweight division, uh, we got about between Ihor Potieria. Going up against Cesar Almeida. Uh, we got Potieria coming in two and four in the UFC, 21 and six overall, and two and three in their last five fights. We got Almeida coming in one and one in the UFC, five and one overall, and four and one in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Almeida in this one by either KO or decision. Um, they're going to be the older fighter by eight years, slightly smaller. But uh, they're definitely going to be the more dangerous of the two, uh, having an extensive uh, kickboxing background. They actually have a decision victory over Alex Pereira. Um, <clears throat> they uh, got decent date takedown defense, which was displayed in their last fight, where they literally, you know, got up against the fence with Dylan Budka trying to take him down, and they just elbowed them into, you know, fucking submission. Uh, they just got to keep it on the feet, and I believe they'll get this one done. 
Pote area, they're going to be younger and taller. They probably will have the edge in the grappling, leaving them with a couple more routes to victory. Uh, but they've uh, been K'd a few times here recently, and uh, they just they need to get this to the ground. I don't think them uh, keeping this on the feet would uh, go in their favor. So I just think though that Almeida will be able to keep it keep it on the feet, and uh, he's going to take this one. I, I mean, I agree with your assessment. I think if Cesar Almeida keeps it on the feet uh, all three rounds, uh, he wins this fight. Um, but I don't think he will. So, Ihor Partiera, um is going to be able to get him down, uh, going to be able to grapple him um, and, and, and subdue him. Um, I don't know. I'd like to say it's going to be a submission victory uh, for Portier or Portier, but uh, I'm not positive on that um I, he just has a few more routes to victory uh almeida is very dangerous super dangerous fighter um if Ewar can just last that first round and that second round you mean to mid second round um i think he has a, a good chance to win this fight uh like i said he has just uh, a lot more weapons in the arsenal versus just uh standing uh kicking and punching um so Ewar takes this one down uh also he's a he's a younger fighter um so I think he gets it done. Moving back to the women's strawweight division, we got Marina Rodriguez going up against Yasmin uh, Lucindo. Um, we got Lucin. Uh, we got Rodriguez coming in seven and four with two draws in the UFC, seventeen and four with those two draws overall, and uh, two and three in their last five fights. We got Lucindo coming in. They are three and one in the UFC. 16 and 5 overall and 4 and 1 in their last 5. Um I'm going to be going with Lucindo in this one by either decision or KO. They're going to be the younger and shorter fighter, but they're definitely pr going to be the faster of the two. Uh they're going to be the more powerful of the two and they're going to be the one looking for the finish. I think they have more of a killer instinct. Uh they can grapple, but they're going to definitely just want to keep this one on the feet as long as they're able to manage their energy and not go too hard trying to find that finish. I think they'll be okay. Uh, Rodriguez, they're going to be the older fighter by 15 years. Um, taller and definitely more experienced. Uh, they're more of like a technical striker, but they, they will, you know, make it dirty if they have to. They... They're the type of striker where they can go from being a competitor into a killer mode. Um, but mostly, you know, they they've uh I've seen them partake in more point fights more than anything. So um, you know, uh they don't really have grappling, which has kind of been exposed here recently, which is why they haven't uh really been able to uh, get over the hump into title contention. And basically, in this one, they're going to have to let their experience take over and really lead the dance in this fight and manage the distance in order to keep Lucindo, you know, at bay. But uh, I just don't think that's going to happen. I think Lucindo is going to uh, – it's going to be kind of like a passing of the torch kind of scenario. Lucindo is one of, like, the youngest on the roster overall. So I'm going to go with them in this one. I got to go with Lucindo as well. Um, she just – she has way more routes to victory. Uh I think she has better grappling, uh, wrestling than uh, Rodriguez does, um, and she has a killer instinct. Um, she's a finisher, um, and like you said, uh, uh, Rodriguez is a, a point fighter. She's a she's she's gonna wear on grind on people, um, and just you know what I mean, sniff crotch, you know what I mean, and, and just very very little bit of striking. Like it just it's not gonna be entertaining. Um, hopefully. Uh, Marina Rodriguez isn't able to bore Lucinda to death um, to win this fight. Um, that's why I got to pick Lucinda to win this one. So, moving on to the middleweight division, or I guess back back to the middleweight division. Uh, we got Roman Delize going up against Kevin Holland. We got Delize coming in there seven and three in the UFC, thirteen and three overall, and three and two in their last five. We got Holland coming in 13 and 8 with one no contest in the UFC, 26 and 11 with that one no contest overall, and 3 and 2 in their last five. 
I'm gonna be going with Holland in this fight by decision or KO. Um, they're gonna be the younger and longer fighter in this bout. They're a dangerous striker. Um, and they, they got some grappling capabilities, but that's not like necessarily their strong suit, but they, they can grapple. Um, I think that they'll prefer to stand in this fight. Um, they got a decent gas tank, decent durability, but really at the end of the day, it just depends on what Kevin Holland shows up. Um, is it going to be the one that, you know, really wants to, you know, win this fight and, you know, just kind of like make a statement? Or is it going to be jokey and eh, I don't really care fucking fighting's fighting Kevin Holland. I mean, he's never really had uh, championship aspirations. Uh, he's more so just a company man. So, like, he's always going to have a fight and, like, a home with the UFC barring some type of outlandish slide. But, I mean, that's really what it is, is he just he takes fights on short notice and or – fills in or you know like I said just is there for the UFC for whatever they need but has never really tried to make a run for the title uh you got the leads a they're the older fighter by five years uh they're going to be the smaller of the two definitely going to have the edge in the grappling um he's actually a really sneaky good grappler uh but he's the type mostly too that he only goes there if he has to but mostly prefers to stand um He's maybe the more powerful of the two, but that kind of makes him a basic striker. He's really just always trying to go for that power finish. Um, and, you know, he can fade uh, if, you know, he starts to throw some volume. Uh, but he's he's good for, you know, a decent gas tank. So I don't really think he poses a big threat. To Kevin Holland unless this goes to the ground but I think Holland even then could be pretty good about getting back to his feet if he's motivated I think Holland will take this one home let me start off with these are two two of the most inconsistent motherfuckers on this entire in, in the UFC not even on just this card just in the UFC I fucking bet on Dalit Zay he fucking, I bet him to win, he fucking loses. I bet him to fucking lose, he fucking wins. Like, he doesn't know, you never know which one's going to show up. Same thing with Kevin Holland. Um, you just never know if it's going to be, I need to win this fight, Kevin Holland, or I I'm here for the paycheck, Kevin Holland. Uh, I fucking hate this fight. Uh, I think it's going to be a great fight. I, again, I don't think there's a bad, really a bad fight on this card, other than uh, the, the, the ladies fight that I just talked about earlier, which hopefully Lucindo's able to make that good. But this will be a great fight. Um, we just don't know. It's a fucking coin flip on if fucking uh, focused ass uh, Delize shows up or a focused ass Holland shows up. We don't know. Um, I hate I hate I hate making these picks. Um, I'm gonna go with Holland. Um, I guess if I gotta go with the less flaky of the two, that's my pick. <sighs> Fuck that pick. I mean, I mean that's I mean that's my pick. It's like my pick, but. Fucking, I mean, I don't, don't, don't put too much money on that fucking pick. <laughs> I feel you, I feel you. Uh, moving on to the women's bantamweight division, I would say that this fight has title implications for one side. And uh, that's going to be Kayla Harrison going up against Ketlin Vieira. We got Caitlin Harrison or Kayla Harrison, uh, one and zero in the UFC, seventeen and one overall, and four and one in their last five fights. We got Vieira coming in; they are eight and three in the UFC, fourteen and three overall, and three and two in their last five fights. Um, I'm gonna be going with Kayla Harrison by submission or decision. Um, like I said, I feel like this fight they take this one; they're probably gonna be next in line for the title or you know, have like one more bout against a top contender and then, you know, we'll move into title contention then. But um, they're going to be a grappler with the uh, Olympic. I mean, I guess like literally like the best judo practitioner ever, not even just like, you know, on an Olympic level or whatever. Like, I guess her judo is just on a whole nother level. Um, Okay, striking. 
Um, but they're definitely gonna you you know use that to gain entry for wrestling and you know even for takedowns with that judo. Um, and just basically want to break their opponent, you know, uh, to either finish them or just dominate them to a decision. Uh, Vieira, decent striker uh, and grappler, definitely someone that is, you know, good to put up against Harrison at this stage in their career, uh, just only having their second UFC fight. Um, they're going to be looking to point fight, though, and, uh, you know, just kind of uh, grind you up against the cage type of uh, scenario. Um, but they don't really do nothing with it. So I think as long as they can uh, keep Harrison on the cage and like actually do something, apply some damage, that would be their route to victory. But I feel like this is kind of a fight for Harrison to win so that they can prop her up to be the next uh, contender for the title. I agree with you. This is Kayla Harrison's fight to lose. Um, <clears throat> she just needs to go in there and get it done. She's the more aggressive of the two fighters. Um, I think we see Kayla Harrison. Uh, I'll go ahead and give away my my pick, my next or my two picks away from now. I think we see Car Kayla Harrison fighting against Ra Raquel Pennington um, for for the belt uh, very soon. Um, I, I I don't see any reason why she doesn't win, um, other than just like absolute bonehead mistake, um, or just that that luck of a puncher's chance mm -hmm. for Vieira. Um, but I definitely take, I think Killer Harrison takes this one down. For sure, for sure. Uh, moving on to the feature bout of the main card. We got a UFC veteran, Jose Aldo, going up against Mario Batista. We got Aldo coming in 14-7 and seven in the UFC, 32-8 and eight overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five fights. We got Batista coming in. They are 8-2 and two in the UFC. 14 and 2 overall, and they're currently riding a six fight win streak. Um, I got Aldo in this one by either decision or KO. They're going to be the older fighter by seven years, definitely way more experienced. Uh, probably someone that Batista was like watching before they actually even got into the game. Uh, but they can still bang and and you know throw heat. Uh, great takedown defense. Uh, they're actually they literally like Marab couldn't even take them down, you know, when they fought, and uh, he was actually bored. He was just looking at his corner and the ref and just, just like what the fuck is going on, you know. But never was able to get put on the ground, but also wasn't able to apply much offense. But anyway, uh. He's more measured nowadays than, you know, what really, like, got him to the show. Uh, nah, I'm sure that just comes with uh, age. And also, he took some time away from the sport to just box. So, I think, you know, that definitely helped him in just kind of, like, coming back and really, you know, being a lot more uh, calculated and measured with how he strikes nowadays. Uh, Batista, he's the younger fighter in this one. He's definitely you know, a powerful striker, uh, definitely well-rounded, um, has a good gas tank, uh, more so a point fighter in my, dis in my opinion, though, he can finish if given the opportunity, but in my opinion, in this fight, um, I just think that, I feel like it's, the moment's gonna get to them similar to Jose Aldo's last opponent with Jonathan Martinez, I think they're going to realize, like, wow, I'm, I'm actually in here with Jose Aldo. And as long as Aldo, you know, comes in like Aldo, like, he doesn't really care if you're young or, you know, what if you're starstruck or whatever. Like, he's going to whoop that ass. So, in my opinion, I think he's going to come in here to prove once again that these young boys really don't got nothing on him. And uh, definitely, I, th I think he's going to take this one on. Jose Aldo is absolutely going to take this one home. Uh, he's just got the higher fight IQ of the two fighters. Um, at the end of the day, he took our current champion, Rob, to a decision, mm -hmm. um, which is not something that happens too often. Um, yeah, I don't know about that, but... Well, it, okay. It, it, <laughs> well, no, it doesn't. Like, I've, it doesn't happen that often, all right? Yeah, I mean, Rob has a lot of decisions.
dead. Jose Aldo wins this one. Mario Batista's not going to get it done. That's my pick. Take it to the bank. Move on to the next one. All right, moving on to the co-main event of the evening. We're in the women's bantamweight division. We got the title on the line. We got Raquel Pennington going up against Juliana Pena. Oh, um, we got Pennington coming in. They are 13 and 5 in the UFC, 16 and 8 overall, and are currently on a six fight winning streak. Oh, uh, we got Pena coming in. They are 7 and 3 in the UFC, 10 and 5 overall, and 3 and 2 in their last five fights. Um, I'm going to be going with Pennington in this one. This is actually. New champion against former champion. Uh, I think Pennington gets this done by decision or KO. They're just a dog fighter who likes to grind their opponents, mostly on the ground. Uh, they're probably going to have the edge and the grappling on this one. They're super durable, and uh, they just need to get this fight to the ground quick and just end it. Juliana Pena, she's just a fucking... Uh, She's just a brawler. Like, she just likes to get in there and make it real dirty. That's how she was able to get the title uh, the first time she got it. She just threw Amanda Nunez off her game. She just made it a dirty fight, got in her face, was willing to take one to give one. And I think uh, Nunez super underestimated her and just kind of probably didn't even really train for the fight because she gassed hard. So I think that, uh, you know, in the second fight, she whooped Pena's ass and, like, really exposed just how, like, underskilled Pena really is in all aspects. Um, I think Pennington, who also took a fucking really, really, really fucking badass whooping from Amanda Nunez as well. Yeah. Uh, she is just more skilled, though. And I think we'll be able to uh, apply... Uh, pressure to Pena, get her to the ground, and just break her at some point. And these two got bad blood. They're definitely going to be uh, wolfing at each other leading up to the fight. You know, we may see a hug afterwards or whatever, or we may not. But uh, they're definitely going to be going in there to get at each other. I just think that Pennington's going to be a little bit more skilled and have a little bit more, you know, technique behind her attacks. Whereas Pena, I think she's just going to just try to just go in there and just go all out. And I just think she's going to leave herself uh, open for a lot of punishment from Pennington. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be going with the champ on this one. I got to go with the champ as well. Uh, Juliana Pena hasn't fought since 2022. Uh, I know I'm kind of fucking flip-floppy throughout this whole card on whether I'm going to pick you because you have whether you have ring rust or I'm not going to pick you. Uh, based on ring rust. On this one, Pennington is just the more active fighter. Um, she is the champ. Uh, you got to, you know what I mean, beat the champ to be the champ. Uh, and I think uh, Pennington just has more of a dog in her. Um, also, uh, she's from, from, a, from a state, you know what I mean? She's from Colorado Springs, you know what I mean? Colorado. So, shout out to the hometown girl. Uh, I think she gets it done. Um... You know what I mean? And gets the W dub. For sure, for sure. All right, moving on to the second title fight of the evening. The main event of the evening. The main event of the evening. All right, that should be enough time for the Bruce Buffer fucking little snippet that I found online so that I don't have to say the main event. Of the evening! Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Woo. Get your ass on, man. You really thought he was out the woods. Huh? You really thought? You, you thought? Uh, I did. I thought, thought we were we were finally past this. We but, might be now. We mean, might be. Just... Like I said, I do have a snippet available. Last week, I was even going to include it, but you were acting like an ass, so I said, fuck that. And now we're in this week. So I think I'm definitely going to include it, but I had to get one more in there. I had to, uh -huh. you know. Um, but we got the light heavyweight title on the line. We got Alex Pereira going up against Khalil Roundtree. 
I don't really know where this fucking fight came from, to be totally honest. I feel like this was a card that had something else in line, and then some shit happened, and they had to call their guy, you know, Poetan, fucking Shama, you know, motherfucking Alex Pereira to come in and save the day. Uh, like I said, I don't know where this shit came from, but I'm not mad at it. This is actually... I actually think that this has the grounds to be a really good fight. It's either Pereira's going to come in here and smoke this fool real fast, or Khalil Roundtree is going to surprise a lot of people and at least give Pereira a run for his money because Roundtree is definitely, like, one of the more violent fighters I've ever seen. Like, he throws everything with fucking horrible intentions. Like, I've seen it. Like, he's a... One of the only fools I've ever seen uh, kick a, a, a cat, like, in the chest and stomach up against the cage and just K him. Like, it, it, it looked crazy. But we got Pereira coming in, the champ, 8-1 and one in the UFC, 11-2 and two overall, 4-1 and one in their last five fights. We got Roundtree coming in, they're 9-5 and five with one no contest in the UFC, 13-5. and five with that one no contest overall and are currently on a five fight win streak. Um, they had recently gotten popped for a substance, but then it was later concluded that that was just like a substance that just, it wasn't, there wasn't malicious intent is I guess the best way to put that. So, uh, they got cleared of that and here they are vying for the title. Um, but we got, Pereira in this, Joan, I, I think that's who I'm going to go with is the champ in this one by either KO or decision. They're going to be the older, taller, longer fighter, uh, dangerous, powerful kickboxer, always looking for the finish, even even by accident. Like, I, I think their type of cat just doesn't know their power. So they could be throwing something regular and that shit just fucking blasts somebody. So it's just like, they even when they're not looking for the finish, they, they could potentially finish you. Uh, all they got to really do is close the distance, use that uh, calf kick to, uh, you know, slow round tree down, take some of the pop off of their shots, and, uh, you know, just catch them with that left hand to death. Um, round tree, like I said, super violent. They're going to be the younger, smaller fighter, so they're going to be super compact and just throwing fucking heat the entire time. Um, but I just think that the moment's going to be too much for them. I, don't, I, I know that they're big in mental preparation. They've overcame a lot from, you know, a long, uh, you know, stint of getting bullied and, you know, later on in their adulthood being super overweight and they were actually like 300 pounds at one point in their life and then totally turned their life around. One of those guys that used MMA to just like get fit, but then ended up finding out they were a fucking monster. But, uh, I just, I don't know. I just, I think that he'll learn and have a lot to gain from this experience, but I don't think he's going to win this fight. But you never know. Um, Both these guys just are probably going to stay on the feet and just give us a really good fight. Or like I said, Pereira is just going to kind of make quick work of this. Um, But I don't think this one's going to go to decision. I'm going to be going with champ. This one absolutely doesn't go to his decision. This one will be the most violent fight maybe we've ever seen in the UFC. Um, both of these men are absolute apex predators. Um, they both want to rip your fucking head off and fucking shit down your neck. Uh, it, it, this is going to be great. It's going to be a great fight. Um, I don't want to take anything away from Khalil Roundtree. Um, I've got to go with the champ. I've got to go with Peloton. But I, I, I think I think they both don't leave the same fighter after this fight. I think I think they they both will be we're not gonna see Peloton come back <clears throat> as quickly, I think, to another fight like we have been in this last year and a half or so. Um I think he's gonna need to take some time off after this fight, because this is going to be a brawl. Unless and this is the only caveat, is if Poetong somehow just clips him. Just clips him right away, you know what I mean, and deads it. Yeah. Um, 
But that's another, also the same possibility for Roundtree. Um, they've both got granite chins. Um, mm. they, I, I don't think either one of them will look the same after this fight. This is going to be. I don't know about Pereira. Crazy. I would say actually, if I was to raise a concern, I would say Pereira's chin is the concern. But it doesn't look like, you know, him moving up to lightweight probably has helped preserve his chin. But then at the same time, too, I don't know if anyone's really got an opportunity to ch test it yet at light heavyweight. But at middleweight, it was shown, you know, he can be dropped. I mean, is he dropped him? I'm not going to say, like, easy, but in that firefight, he caught him clean, and that dude dropped, like, a sack of fucking potatoes. Like, was the lights went completely out. And he actually took a minute to get back up from that, too, so... I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Definitely. Roundtree has a nice probability of being able to, you know, catch that, you know, chin or, you know, hit that button and put this one, uh, to put him to sleep. But I just think Poetan's too um, experienced, too, uh, just too deadly. Like I said, I, I think he can end somebody not trying to do that, that like that not being the the intention right then and there. Mm -hmm. He might just be even trying to set something up and catch somebody with the setup. Absolutely. You know? So I got to go with Pereira unless, you know, homeboy, you know, shocks us, which I ain't going to be mad at. I might throw a little bit, of, you know, small money, flip-flop money on round tree, but my pick's going to be with Pereira on this one. Yeah. I just, I don't. And folks, like, this is not solid. Like, don't, 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 don't get twisted and believe that this is a, a layup because it's not. Poetan is an absolute murderer. We know this. Um, but Khalil Roundtree is a bad man as well. Uh, so, so uh, I would be uh, easy on the money uh, on this particular fight. It's gonna be good. This is a great card. Yeah, this is one of the best cards they've put together in a long time. Um. I'm excited. I'm excited to watch it. Uh, I mean, there's not enough I can say about it other than uh, uh, what fight was that? The uh, what are we doing here? Esperanza Pennington. Bruh. I'll get a little bit of a fucking star fest. Uh, and then Luciano. What did he say? And Rodriguez will also be a fucking star fest. What, what? the fuck, bro? What? <laughs> 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 you said Esperanza versus fucking Pennington and Luciano or Luciano? Really, nigga? <laughs> oh, my. oh my god, bro. Um, anyway, <laughs> that ends our uh, predictions and picks portion of this show. You got you got any parlays? All right. Did you cut? Yeah, let's so let me hear it. Did you fuck the cut so I can put them together real fast? Uh, all right. And then, then I'll, I'll get after that. Uh, you want to get into these parlays now that you got them? Absolutely. Uh, I've got a uh, a quick four for you. You know what I mean? Solid four. Okay. I've got uh, Joaquin Buckley. Lucindo, Pennington, and Harrison. Pennington being uh, our championship fight. And Kayla Harrison. That's my four. Okay. Spicy is five, he, Esperanza. Spicy? Who the fuck is that guy? Spicy six, OSP for the W dub. Uh, I got a, let's see, I got a four. I got a base four as well. I got Lucindo, Harrison, Pennington in the championship fight, or Cal Pennington, and uh, Alex Pereira. Uh, add on a spicy Aldo and a spicy Holland, and that will make six as well on my end. 
feel good about that base four. I don't know. Though, don't you think? Well, actually, I feel good about the spicy aldo. I don't know about the spicy. The spicy holland's a little wild. You know, right? but but that's why we do. That's why we go spicy. Dang, I'm just saying you that's know, a little It wouldn't be wild. spicy if I because you don't know who's gonna show up. Bullshit. I feel you. Anyway, though, um, we'll put the graphics up here. We're actually in a in a in a good little groove right now. So this episode's being shot early, prior to the UFC Paris card getting uh going down. So uh, we actually don't have those picks uh, confirmed yet. You know what we went win loss wise, but. We'll put the graphics up here for y'all to see what that was because by the time we put this episode out, we'll have had confirmation then. So here's the all-time uh, picks and percentages for us. You know, for at this point now, that'll be 32 events. You know, bro's still leading me at this point by 12 fights. We'll see after that card goes past. We'll see where we're at then. Uh, we only actually disagreed on one fight on that card, so I only have the potential to get one more fight back, bring it down to 11, and then we can get to this card, and I might be able to snatch a few more back at that point, but that's where we are. Um, outside of that, I uh, just want to thank everybody for watching. Make sure that you check out our shorts and our uh, you know clips you know, where we discuss and bros, you know, bros talk for real about some topics going on in the MS, MMA sphere. Oh, um, shouts out to everybody that watched the, uh, the TikTok. Oh, uh, shot it up to like 1500 views. Um, I'm not even sure which one was that? Which clip was that? It was just the fucking, the, the. When you call Gabriel, him Gabriel Miranda. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Gabriel Miranda clip. Appreciate that. For sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, make sure that you follow us on TikTok at Bros Talk MMA. Uh, follow us on IG as well, Bros Talk MMA. You can follow my bro here at r1.mason, and you can follow me at Utica underscore SME. Um, make sure that you like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, we look forward to this card, even though we're like way out, you know, in the future right now, this is, you know, you're, you're, you're looking, you don't even know, this, this is the future, you don't even know what's going on right now, but, uh, yeah, until then, uh, we wish y'all nothing but the best, uh, good luck this weekend and, uh, happy betting and until the next time. We out.